All right guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Cody Groom and today we have a 2021 Supra. This is a controversial car for sure. There's this weird thing where obviously it has a BMW engine, ton of BMW parts, but it's a Toyota. And I think it just hits a lot of people in that place where they're like, I hate that car, I don't like it. But I wanted to talk a little bit about why I actually bought this car. So this car to me, it has a, it's a platform that I think is just amazing. The B58 and the combination of this car, it's insane what you can do with the simple downpipe, a tune, you know, little minor thing, tweaks to this car and you're pushing 500 wheels, 600 wheel. It's insane. What sold me on this car was driving it. The stock sound sounds good. I think a lot of people can go off the looks and the looks are a little funky. Like the, the front to me looks a little weird. It kind of has that moop nose that the Z, Z had. That, so kind of, it obviously carries on that because it is the Z chassis. But where I really enjoy the car is the rear. This thing is just, it's aggressive. It, all the body lines, especially how they went and did the diffuser. Like I feel like that's the biggest diffuser that's on a stock car, but I honestly love it. I think it looks so good. It just has this like meaty rear end. I gotta say, one of the main things I love about the car is actually driving. Like the way this car drives. When the turbo is spooled, the sounds you get, the stock, even the stock sound. Put that in sport mode and the stock sound sounds so damn good. This car, you want to drive it harder. Like every corner, you're like, oh man, I could go a little bit faster through there. It's a little bit dangerous, but it's so fun. Now, it being the 2021, you can see it has little things. It's got the brake calipers, now say Toyota Supra. Um, and now it has a different manifold design. On top of that, it's got 380 horsepower, 382 to be exact. It's about 50 more horsepower than 2020 version. Now, initially people thought this was just a tune, but it's not. So a lot of 2020 owners are actually pretty upset that the resale of their car may be going down in value. But the bottom line is once you put a downpipe and tune on this, it doesn't matter if you have a 2020 or a 2021, it's an insane car. What makes a car actually fun? It's definitely not horsepower, but it does play a factor, right? You don't want a slow car. But I think for me, it's a number of things. It's it, the car being engaging, the transmission actually working with you, not against you and having the power when you need it. This particular one I have here is a 3.0 premium. Basically means that a lot of the things that are optional in the 3.0 are actually standard. So things like CarPlay, a lot of boring safety features. Um, this particular one has carbon fiber mirrors. Now obviously being that BMW designed a lot of this car and Toyota took it over after, there's a lot of design cues from BMW, but when you get into the interior, I gotta say it has the hints of a BMW. Obviously you have the iDrive, you have the screen and all that, but there's just certain things that Toyota did differently that I know BMW wouldn't do. And just like stuff, that, so like you have this piece that kind of goes up along the center console. And to me that piece kind of feels like it's like it should be on the other side, you know, going basically on the passenger side so that the center console then is shifted towards me. I don't really dig that. I really don't dig the steering wheel. The steering wheel to me, I drove a U-Haul today and the steering wheel feels similar to the U-Haul. That's not a good thing. It's very skinny. It feels like almost like a school bus steering wheel. The steering actual feel is pretty light, but the car makes up for it. Like I said, when you're driving this thing, you're wanting to push on it flat through the canyons and it's just loads of fun. I'm like, honestly, I, I just want to drive it harder every time I drive it. I got a number of plans for this car. I obviously I got to get a downpipe and tune on it. It definitely needs to be lowered, some spacers, maybe some different wheels or maybe just changing the actual color of these. These wheels actually look pretty damn good when they're not the two-tone that they are right now. I think this two-tone really throws it off and really makes it, that, those look like economy car wheels to me. They just. I've never been a fan of any type of wheel that does that. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look right to me. 
So the tires that come with this car are Michelin Super Sports. They're 255, 35, 19 up front and 275, 35, 19 in the rear. The wheels themselves are actually forged. So they are a nice set of wheels that come on this car. You don't wanna go and take these off and put crappier wheels on. Not a lot of cars come with forged wheels from the factory. It is a nice touch. Although, like I mentioned, they're two-tone. You can powder coat that and change it. That's probably what I'll do. So this car does not come in a manual. I know you guys are mad. Everyone's mad. Everyone always wants a manual, but the reality is this car really, I hate to say it doesn't make sense for a manual. I love manual transmissions. I have two manual cars right now. I don't know if I want this one in a manual. And um, let me explain. This is an eight-speed automatic right now. I love the dual clutch. I have an E92 M3 and the dual clutch to me just, it's reactive. It still has those elements of manual that I want as far as like how the car drives, how it reacts. Obviously you don't have a clutch. It throws you back in your seats. The gear shifts hard. I do find that I'm missing something from the dual clutch. Like coming from just, you know, BMW M cars having that dual clutch, it doesn't have, it's missing something. I can't place my, my finger on exactly what it is, but the dual clutch, a little bit better. It does an excellent job of giving you the best of both worlds. It gives you that time when you want to drive hard, it's reactive, it's quick, the shifts are insanely fast. And then on the other side, when you want to just have a car that you can cruise around, you don't have to worry so much about like something like dual clutch being a little clunky on starts and stops. You really can like daily drive this car essentially if you wanted to. But also like say you just have some people in the car and you just want to drive, it's nice to be able to have a sport mode and the normal mode and, and go in between. I'm excited. I think this is a car that a lot can be done with it and I'm excited to share with you guys the whole process of what happens with this car. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you got something to say, leave me a comment below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.